guys, and then uh, let's take a comfortable seat on the edge of a blanket. Um, and as you're sitting, just tilt your pelvis forward. Roll your shoulders all the way up and back and all the way up and forward. And as you're doing this, shift the hips, the head, excuse me, not the hips, the head from side to side as you're feeling those little cracks in the back of the neck. And then we're gonna take the hands behind our backs and interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together and press the knuckles down the back and away from you. And then add a few stretches of the neck. So press the ear into one shoulder. Turn the head over to the side and press the chin down. Press the chin towards the chest and look all the way down. Turn over to the opposite side, press the chin down towards your armpit or towards the center, rather the corner of the chest. Turn the opposite ear into the opposite shoulder and then all the way back. And shift from side to side as you're shifting the head all the way back and then take the circle over to the opposite side, reversing that circle that you just created. When you're ready, you can shake off the hands, roll the shoulders right on top of the hips, and then you can take the two fingertips, index finger and middle finger, right into your jawline, just like we did last time. You're gonna find that muscle right in between upper jaw and lower jaw. And in, in, if you are not able to find it, just open and close the bottom of your mouth, open, close, and that muscle that's moving underneath your fingertips, that's the muscle you wanna pinpoint down and bring into relaxation. So. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes you're holding a lot of tension there. You wanna maybe create circular movements to massage that muscle, or you just wanna pinpoint down and relax it as much as you can. And then release the hands all the way to the bottom of the jaw, coming into the sides of the neck. The sides, not the front, but the sides of the neck where our muscles are and where the tension is hiding. Emily spoke about that especially, and coming all the way to the base of the neck, and then see if you can just pedal the fingers here or even the hands. And you can bring the fingertips even further back as you're stretching out those muscles. You can bring the opposite hand to the opposite shoulder, squeeze and release. So grab this meaty part of the shoulder and um, the base of the neck, squeeze and release a couple times, just releasing the muscle there. Squeeze and release into the opposite side. You should feel a little bit more spacious, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more alive actually in the base of the neck, in the shoulder area. And then just roll the shoulders back and over the hips and rest the hands onto your thighs. You can close the eyes here and take a few deep breaths, inhaling in through the nose, exhaling out through the mouth. You can sigh it out here as much as you can. Sighing out may be audible or inaudible. Making sure that you're completely releasing of any tension in the body, in the breath, in the mind. Relax the shoulders, and as you inhale, inhale in through the nose, lengthen through the spine, sitting a little taller, pressing the crown of the head up towards the sky. But as you exhale, try not to lose that length in the spine. Try not to lose that space that you just created. Instead, allow yourself to find some softness. Softness in the shoulders, softness in the back of the mouth, the tongue in between the teeth the fingertips on the thighs, the glutes or the inner thighs, the ankles or the feet. Notice where you are holding tension and let it go completely. Remember that strong connection between jaw tightness and cervix tightness. And in reality, it's more about upper body muscles and lower body muscles are connected with one another through the nervous system. Now, when we feel tension and we come across a difficult, stressful situation, an uncomfortable situation, the body starts to tense up and we start to hold on 
grip on breathe more shallowly and we tend to feel that tension through the rest of the body get the whole body getting ready to flee the situation to run away and that's called the sympathetic nervous system getting us ready to escape the situation and that's great and all when we are faced with a bear in the middle of the woods but when we are through our pregnancy or through our birth and contractions are coming one after the other and we're feeling that tension in the body, the sympathetic nervous system doesn't really serve us in that instant. What we need is, yes, we are going through discomfort, but we need to somehow find relaxation and a way to cope through that uncomfortable situation. So how can we find the breath here? How can we engage the breath and use it as a tool to get our body to relax, even though our body might be going through something uncomfortable, something that might be causing pain or discomfort? Remember this breath, this deep abdominal breathing where as you inhale, you're lengthening through the spine and as you exhale, you're sighing it out and you're completely letting go. You're completely softening, completely releasing any control, anything that you might be holding back. With your next inhale, I encourage you to take your palms together in front of the heart. Press the thumbs into the center of your chest so lift the sternum up. So you're lengthening through the upper back a little bit longer. And begin to set an intention for your practice today. And your intention might be just a word or a sentence, a mantra, something that has kept you going throughout this entire pregnancy, especially with things going on around us that might cause more uncertainty and more fear and more negative feelings overall. So you want to find that one word, that one sentence, that one mantra that keeps you going strong, motivated, patient, and courageous through this entire pregnancy, through the journey of birth, and most importantly, through the entire journey of motherhood. Find that word, that one sentence, take a deep breath in, and sigh it out as you seal that intention close to your heart. Excellent, and begin to release the hands, allow the eyes to open. Let's bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to open up far apart from each other. You can even take the feet further away from each other to have more space for the belly. And just begin to walk the hands out in front of you, rounding the spine now, as you're folding forward. Relax the head here and allow the shoulders to round. Take a deep breath in, let it out through the mouth. Two more exactly like that. Inhale, start to bend into the elbows a little bit, relaxing the forearms to the ground. Inhale, let it out through the mouth. And then slowly, slowly, let's begin to walk the hands back and come back to our seat. We're going to cross the opposite leg in the front. I don't know if you remember which leg you've had in the front, but cross the opposite leg. Reach the hands up towards the sky, lift and lengthen. And as you exhale, take a side bend over to the right. I'm going to mirror you. So I'm going to be going to my left, but you're going to be going to the right. You're going to relax this right shoulder and reach up and over. So we're stretching the side body here stretching in between the ribs to create more space for our breath and more space for the belly and the baby right into the, set, the sides, right into the obliques. So reach up and over as much as you can, stretching out that side body, especially if you've been sitting all day, we're gonna do two more on each side. Ladies that just joined us, welcome. If you like, you can turn on your camera, but please know that we are being recorded by Zoom and by Willow Street. So if you'd like to not be recorded today, feel free to stay off camera, that's absolutely fine. But if you'd like to say hi, please feel free to do so. 
And if you'd like to share how many weeks you are, please feel free to do so. Last one towards the left, ladies. Let's come back to center, reach the hands up. Let's take a twist over to the right. Let's plant the right hand behind us, lengthen the spine, inhale to lengthen, exhale to slightly twist. Reach the hands all the way up towards the sky and exhale to slightly twist over to the opposite side. So open twist here, not a closed twist, so not closing towards the belly. Just to keep the spine nice and flexible. Reach the hands up. We're gonna release the hands behind you. And so fingertips are facing you here. You can lift the heart up towards the sky, just taking a slight back bend here. As you lift the chest up and open up through the shoulders and look up and press up as much as you can and opening up through the collarbones. Excellent. Let's come all the way back to center. Let's shift the, the knees over to one side and come into all fours. Feel free to cushion the knees with a blanket if you like, or a towel, whatever props you have around you. You can take some organic movements here, cat and cow. You can shift the hips over to one side, shift the hips over to the other side. Look over one shoulder, look over the other. A little diagonal stretch maybe, pressing the right glute into the left heel opposite glute into the opposite heel. Open up the knees here so the belly can fit right into the center. If you're doing this with me. For those of you with bigger bellies, you might be feeling this little part below the belly start to feel really tense and really tight. So feel free to add a little bit of a lazy up dog here with me. You can walk the hands a little further away and then shift one hip down as you press the heart forward, not up, but forward, and then press the opposite hip down as you press the heart forward, just easing into the stretch, not really focusing on the center so that you avoid the, the round ligaments, but instead focusing on that bottom part of the belly. And then you can press back into the heels, coming into your child's pose, and you can release the head all the way down to the floor. Excellent, let's take one more deep breath in. Let it out through the mouth. Very nice. Let's begin to press back up, coming into table, coming into all fours. As you inhale, drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the gaze, look up. And as you exhale, round the spine, press the back of the spine all the way up. Tuck the tailbone and relax the head. Inhale to drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the gaze, look up. And as you exhale, round the spine, press the back of the spine all the way up. One more time, inhale, drop the belly, lift the heart, exhale to round the spine. As you inhale, come back into your table, nice and long spine here. So hug the baby a little closer to you so you're not collapsing into your low back and you're not arching. So just press back, not engaging through your core, but just hugging the baby in. We're gonna take the right foot back behind you. As you keep the ball of the foot on the floor, take it over to the left side and look over your left shoulder. The further up you can see that straight leg, the more of a side bend you're gonna feel on your right side. Inhale, lengthen, press the floor away so you're not collapsing into the shoulders. Exhale to look over the shoulder a little bit more. Let's bring it back into center. Now lift the foot off of the mat, all five toes pointing towards the ground. Keep pressing the floor away and lengthen the left fingertips out in front of you. Reach away, lengthen two different directions. And as you exhale, release the hand and the knee to the floor. Four more, exactly like this. Inhale to reach away, lengthen. Exhale to release. Deep breath in to reach away, lengthen. Exhale, release. Two more, inhale to reach away. Exhale. Inhale to reach away, lengthen. You can stay there or you can bend the back knee, grab hold of the foot and press the foot away from you, adding a little bit of a back bend, but more of a hip flexor stretch here. Keep pressing the floor away. Let's take one breath, and as you exhale, release. Open up the knees, mat distance apart. Shift the hips back into the heels, release into your child's pose. Forehead can come all the way down to the mat or on a block or a blanket. Inhale, let it out. Deep breath in. Let it out. One more. 
Exhale. As you inhale, reach the fingertips towards the top of the mat. Plant the palms, spread the fingers wide, curl the toes, and let's begin to lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. First down dog of our practice. So let's see if we can open up the feet a little wider, create a little extra space for the belly here, and then pedal the feet. You bend into the right knee so much that the left heel is almost touching the floor, and vice versa, bend into the left knee so much that the right heel is touching the floor. Press the chest towards your thighs as you tilt the tailbone up towards the sky. Relax the head so the neck is nice and long. One more deep breath in, and as you exhale, press both heels into the floor, finding extension in both the spine and the back of the leg. Inhale to shift forward into your plank, and as you exhale, drop your right knee to the floor and walk it in a little bit, so it's right below your right hip. And let's open up into side plank. So right shoulder right on top of your right wrist. Extend the left leg back and plant the left foot to the ground. Reach the hand, the left hand up towards the sky. Take a deep breath in. Feel free if you have the balance here to lift that left foot off the ground. Energize that left leg and flex the foot. Press away from the floor. Take the top hand up and over of the side of the room, of the side of the head rather, press the ribs up towards the sky. Let's come back into the table, back into all fours. Inhale to drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the gaze, look up, and as you exhale, round the spine. Come back into your table. From your table, we're gonna take that right foot out to the side. So we're gonna come into a side lunge here. So straight out to the side. Now turn the toes out to the right hand corner of the room, wherever you're facing. You're gonna bend into that right knee and you're gonna walk your hands over to that right side. Excellent. You can shift from side to side here a little bit. You can create pelvic tilts or maybe hip circles. Find whatever works for you here. Just finding a little movement, feeling this in the inner thighs and basically in the pelvic floor. One more deep breath in. Let it out and press towards that right side. Let's come back into center. Plant that uh, right foot to the ground. Once again, parallel to the side of the mat. Grab a book or a block, whatever you're able to on that left side and plant your hand on it. Excellent, we're gonna take that right hand up and over and side bend here. Inhale back to center. And as you exhale, over to the opposite side. Inhale, back to center and as you exhale, towards the block or towards the book, back to center, and then as you exhale, towards the straight leg. Inhale, back to center, release the hands to the ground, bring that right knee in, and release the block off to the side. We're gonna come into our first discomfort pose before we come to the opposite side. So I'm gonna curl my toes under, and shift my hips back, rolling my shoulders right on top of my hips, and right on top of my um, heels. So sitting back now, you can feel this, starting to feel the tension in the bottom of your feet or your toes, your big toes. You can relax the hands. And remember that breath that we had at the beginning of our practice. So remember that a deep abdominal breathing where you let go of any tension that's starting to rise up, that's starting to build up. Remember that mantra, that word, or that sentence that you set for yourself to keep you strong through any challenge that might come your way. Relax the shoulders, relax the eyebrows and the back of the jaw. Let go of any tension wherever you're feeling it, especially if you're feeling at the bottom of the feet. I'm with you. I feel the same way. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Two more, exhale, last one, inhale, let it out, very nice. And let's begin to release, uncurl the toes and tap the tops of the feet on the floor to counteract that movement. We're gonna come back into table, back into all fours. As you inhale, drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the gaze, look up. And as you exhale, round the spine, press the back of the spine all the way up. Inhale to drop the belly, lift the heart, lift the gaze. Exhale to round, round, round as much as you can. One more at your own pace. Inhale to drop the belly, lift the heart. 
Exhale to round. Very nice. As you inhale, come back into your table. You're gonna take the left foot back behind you. Ball of the foot is on the floor and take it over to the right side. And look over your right shoulder as much as you can. The further you can see up that straight leg, the more of a side bend you're gonna feel on that left side. When you're ready, let's bring it back into center. Lift the foot off of the mat. All five toes pointing towards the ground. Press the floor away so we're not collapsing through the belly, the low back, or the shoulders. And then reach your right fingertips out in front of you. Keep the gaze down so the neck is nice and long. Lengthen, press the floor away. And then as you exhale, release hand and knee to the floor. Four more. Inhale to reach away, lengthen. Exhale to release. Deep breath in. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Deep breath in to reach away. Exhale to release. Last one. Inhale to reach away. You can stay there or bend the back knee, grab hold of the foot, and press the foot away from your sit bone. Lengthen the spine here, adding just a slight back bend, not too deep, and then begin to release. Let's open up the knees, map distance apart. Shift the hips back into the heels, release into your child's pose all the way down. Inhale in through the nose, let it out through the mouth. Deep breath in, side out. Inhale, exhale. As you inhale, reach the fingertips towards the top of the mat, plant the palms, spread the fingertips wide, curl the toes, and then let's begin to lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. You can continue to pedal the feet. Maybe open up the feet mat distance apart. Maybe shift the hips from side to side, allowing the hips to open up and the back of the legs to stretch a little bit. Or you can find stillness in your downward facing dog, but allow the head to relax and stretch out the neck a little. Deep breath in, and then as you exhale, press both heels into the floor. Inhale to shift forward into your plank, and as you exhale, drop the left knee to the ground right below your left hip, left shoulder right on top of the left wrist. And now let's open up once again, side plank, extending your right leg and planting the foot to the ground. Reach the right fingertips up towards the sky. If you feel steady here, lift that right foot off of the mat, energizing the right leg and flexing the foot, press the floor away, lengthen, take the top hand up and over the side of the head, press the ribs up, Come back into table, back into all fours. Just one cat and cow here to reset the spine. Inhale to drop the belly, lift the heart. Exhale to round, round, round as much as you can. Let's come back into table. I'm gonna face you once again. We're gonna take the left foot to the side. My kitty cat knows it's feeding time, so he's going a little crazy. So we're gonna take the block over to the right side. Turn your toes towards the left side, bend into that left knee, and then walk the hands over to that left side. Again, you're going to feel this in your inner thighs, pelvic floor muscles, so you can shift from side to side, maybe find a little movement, maybe not at all, just stay as you are. Your choice how you want to move here. This is a great pose for um, contractions because you can move, because you can find a distraction mechanism because you can stretch at the same time and you can soften upper body and lower body at the same time. Let's begin to straighten out the leg, bring the foot to be parallel to the side of the mat once again and lift all the way up as you're stacking your shoulders right on top of the, the hips and right on top of that bottom knee. Plant the right hand to your block. Take the left hand up and over, press the ribs up. Come back into your center and stretch over towards the straight leg. Come back to center. Let's stretch over to the block or the book. Come back to center. Exhale towards the straight leg. Excellent. Come back to center. Release the hands to the ground. Let's bring that left knee in. And let's find our last child's pose. So you can open up the knees, mat distance apart. Shift the hips back and release into your child's pose. You can always place a prop underneath your forehead or something underneath the chest so the belly is kind of floating off of the floor. 
Two more deep breaths. And as you exhale, again, I encourage you to sigh it out, completely letting go, completely releasing. Allow the mouth to open and allow the tongue to float with that last exhale. Very nice. And then let's slowly begin to walk the hands and walk the hands towards you. So you're gonna come into your second discomfort pose. You're gonna open up the knees, mat distance apart, and then open up the feet, mat distance apart. We're gonna bend the knees to about 90 degree angle. You're gonna bring the um, forearms to the thighs. The two ladies that joined us a little later, Eleanor and M, um, if you are above 35 weeks and the baby is facing down, feel free to come into a low squat like this. So you're working with gravity. But for the rest of us, we're not quite there yet. So we're gonna come into a discomfort squat. So we're strengthening our quads or glutes and we're finding that that point where we're uncomfortable and we're working with our breath and stamina. So the discomfort poses are to train us for contractions. And that's why we're holding them for about a minute, which is the average time of a contraction. We're making sure that we're staying and sticking to it. And as much as we can, we're working through it with our breath. We find some movement throughout the, these contraction-like discomfort poses so that we can keep the body and the mind busy and not focused on the discomfort, instead focusing on something else, a distraction. Roll the shoulders back, sit a little lower. Let's take one more deep breath in and sit a little lower. Excellent, let's slowly come on up. Whew. Shake it off. You can shake it off by just bending slightly the knees and just shaking, literally shaking your quads away and relaxing your muscles, or you can just shake it off one foot at a time. Excellent. We're gonna take a relaxation pose after a discomfort pose. So I highly recommend grabbing a blanket or a towel and folding it in a couple times so you get it nice and thick like mine is. And I can show you this a little sideways and with my back as well. You're gonna place your blanket up against the wall or um, I see um, Ashley, I see you have a wall. Emily, I see you have like a surface there, a desk or something that you can put your hands on. So you can put the blanket a couple feet away from that surface. The balls of the feet are gonna go on the blanket, heels off the blanket, and then you're gonna reach for that surface wherever it is. You're gonna press your chest down towards the floor as you're sticking your bum out and back. So you're gonna come into an L shape basically. Excellent, very nice. So one straight line with the spine, one straight line for the legs. The hips are coming right on top of the ankles, right on top of the knees. Now, if you're starting to round your spine, which makes total sense, that means that your hamstrings are tight, that means that your lower back is uh, pulling, and that makes total sense during pregnancy or any other time during our lives from sitting a lot. Just micro bend those knees just a tiny bit and then stick your bum out and back in the same amount. You're still going to get that stretch in the back of the legs. You're still going to be able to stretch your calves, get rid of those leg cramps if you're having any in the middle of the night, but also get rid of any lower back pain as it starts to build up with the weight of the belly. And also you're creating more flexibility and more mobility and more space around your pelvis here. Lower under your pelvis and above your pelvis, of course. This doesn't tend to be super comfortable for your upper back. So when you're ready, let's come up and off of the, um, away from the stretch. You can grab some water if you like. And when you're ready, let's set up for our standing flow. So. I have my blocks and I'm going to set them up at the top of the mat. If you have your two thick books or anything else that you can place your hands on that can um, take the shape of a block or a book, feel free to place it in the front of your mat. You're going to take your right foot forward, left foot in the back. You're going to bend into your front knee right on top of your front ankle. 
Now, when you're doing this, the back leg tends to kind of bend and kind of relax. See if you can press the back leg towards the back wall. So you're engaging through your inner thighs here. What that will do is give you more strengthening in the pelvic floor muscles. Try, excuse me, try to turn your shoulders to face forward where you're facing, where your front leg or your front foot is facing and allow the hips to go as far as they can, as far forward as they can. Reach the hands up towards the sky, relax the shoulders, lengthen, and try to bring your shoulders right above your hips here. So you're creating just a tiny bit of an arch in your lower back, but you're hugging the baby close to you. Reach up and straighten out the front leg, but try not to lock into the front knee. You're still engaging that front leg. And as you exhale, pull the elbows down and back as you're bending into the front knee. We're gonna do four more. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to pull down. Deep breath in to reach up. Exhale to pull down. Inhale. Exhale, pull down. Deep breath in. Pull down with a bunch of strength here in the upper arms. Excellent. Take the hands behind your back. Interlace the fingers. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Press the knuckles down the back leg as you lift the heart. And add a few stretches of the neck here. Maybe the head goes around in a circle. And reverse the circle over to the opposite side. Then release the hand hold. Take the hands to the hips. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Reach the hands all the way up towards the sky. Inhale to prepare. And as you exhale, you're going to open up that back foot and come into your warrior two. So the back foot now comes parallel to the back of the mat. Your hips are facing to the side of your mat. Keep bending into the front knee. Now, when you're coming into your warrior two, you're going to notice that front knee wants to collapse inwards and fall towards your big toe. See if you can keep it right above your ankle, aligning with your middle toes instead. So again, you're gonna engage your inner thighs to do that. Reach the hands out, away from you. As you inhale, once again, you're gonna straighten out the front leg and bring the hands to center and to heart. And as you exhale, press away and bend into the front knee. Inhale to bring them in. Exhale to press away. Deep breath in to bring them in. Exhale. Two more, inhale. Exhale. Last one, deep breath in, exhale to press out. Now reverse the front palm, keep bending into the front knee and reverse your warrior towards the back leg. Keep reaching towards the back of the room. Come back into your warrior two and bring your front forearm to your front thigh. Reach your left fingertips up and over, stretching out the side body here. Come back into your warrior two. Let's begin to straighten out the front leg, shift the hips towards the back. Reach as far away as possible with your right fingertips as much as you can. Keep lengthening through the right side body. And then let's bring that right hand to the block or the book to the inside of that right foot. Lengthen through your left fingertips. Try to keep that space nice and long for the bottom right ribs away from the right thigh. One more deep breath in. And exhale to turn and twist a little bit more towards the sky. Very nice. Let's begin to bend into the front knee. Let's come all the way back up into a warrior two. Inhale to prepare, ladies, and as you exhale, you're gonna cartwheel the hands to the inside of that right foot onto your books or blocks, whatever you might have, and you're gonna bring the back ball of the foot on the floor. So you're coming into a nice high lunge here, and I want you to stay nice and high. Try not to collapse forward here, because you might pull round ligament and you might not notice until tomorrow. So you want to stay nice and high. Hips are lifted at shoulder height. Very nice. Deep breath in and as you exhale, press back, straightening out both legs. You're pressing the back heel into the floor, stretching out the back calf, and then you're reaching your front toes towards the sky, stretching out the front calf. Excellent. Inhale to shift forward. Exhale to shift back. Both legs are straight. Stretching out both calves. Inhale to shift forward. Exhale to shift back. Press the heart forward. Now, once again, come into your lunge and then drop the back knee to the floor. Shift the hips back and over that left knee. So you're prepping for your half split here. And then straighten out the right leg 
The right foot is flexed, pointing the toes up towards the sky. Bring your blocks or your books with you. And then press the chest forward towards your toes as you're lengthening through the spine and tilting the tailbone back. A few pelvic tilts here so that we can create a little extra space for that pelvis. So as you inhale, tuck the tailbone in and tuck the, the chin into the chest, round the spine. As you exhale, press the tailbone back and press the chest forward, lengthen and feel that stretch in the back of the right leg. Inhale to tuck in and round as much as you can. Exhale to press back and press the chest forward, lengthen the spine. One more, inhale. Exhale. Very nice. Let's slowly begin to walk with our blocks or our books forward, finding our lunge. Walk the hands to the inside of that right foot and then walk the hands with the blocks or without to the center of your mat and fold here for your wide-legged forward fold. Feel free to bring your toes and heels out if your sacrum or SI joint or low back feel a little tight today. Just a little internal rotation for the hips and creating a little extra space in those joints in the sacrum. And allow yourself to fold here. You can fold down, resting the hands to the floor or resting the hands to blocks, just depending on how you feel, how far down you want and you're able to let go. Now we're gonna come in for an open twist once again. So I'm gonna take my right hand right in front of me on a block and press the floor away. So I'm gonna come halfway up here. And then I'm gonna take the left hand all the way up towards the sky. Inhale to lengthen halfway up. Exhale to twist and open up, keeping the sacrum and the hips as they are even. Release the left hand to the block or the floor. Press the floor away, coming halfway up. Take the right hand up towards the sky. Again, that, those hips will wanna shift over to the, towards that right side. See if you can keep them even and then just twist through the torso, feeling that in the side body. And then coming down. Excellent, we're gonna release that block or that book off to the side. I'm gonna toe heel the feet all the way in. We're gonna come in for our third discomfort pose. This time it's a chair squat. So you're gonna come and bring your feet a little closer to each other. Sit back with your bum so that you are imagining that you're trying to find a seat to sit on. And then you're gonna reach the hands up towards the sky. Again, I'm moving because I wanna find that distraction. I wanna find that release in the body. I don't want my body to be freezing up every time it comes in face-to-face -face with a distraction or rather a discomfort, I apologize, not a distraction. When we find something uncomfortable, we tend to freeze up. And that's what makes us feel that tension throughout the rest of the body. Tension gripping our teeth and therefore sending that tension to the lower part of the body, all of a sudden getting all engaged to run away from the situation. So instead, let's see how we can find movement, create circulation in the body, create distraction, create relaxation, and focus on our breath. Sit a little lower, ladies. Sit a little lower with me. One more deep breath in, sit a little lower. Let's come all the way up. Excellent. Shake it off. Oof. Very nice. Let's find a relaxation pose, speaking of which. So if you are having leg cramps or lower back pain, feel free to come back into that L shape, especially if it's giving a nice little stretch in your hamstrings and it's creating a little extra space in your lower back. Otherwise, we'll come into a figure four. So again, you can hold on to a surface that you have nearby. You can plant the hands on that surface for stability. We're gonna externally rotate your right knee or your left knee, bring the ankle right on top of the bottom knee, bend the bottom knee and stick your bum out as you press your heart forward. So you're gonna feel it in that glute that's lifted. So if you're doing your right side, you're gonna feel in your right glute. I don't know if you guys have any pets, but mine right now is not having it. 
How dare you talk to your screen and not feed me? One side is gonna feel it more than the other. Ashley, this is a perfect stretch for you to do throughout your day if you can, especially if your hips are feeling tight because you might be sitting for work, you might be you know, standing a lot, you might be doing whatever your routine is, but because of your sleep, this is a good stretch to do throughout the day as much as you can, just to kind of give a little space to the hips throughout the day before they go and lock into that position when you're sleeping. So see which side, and this is for all of you, see which side is feeling more tight, more tense, and stay in that tighter side a little longer. You want to even out the body. You want to find that balance in the body. So unfortunately, sometimes that means staying in the tighter side longer in a stretch to bring them back in balance. Here I see, when I see moms in the uh, class, in the physical class, sometimes I see them shifting the weight back. So as you're coming into your figure four, you're just kind of holding on to the wall and then pressing back. Try to not actually have your weight into your heel. Try to have your weight forward into the ball of the foot and then shift the tailbone back instead and press towards the wall so that you're holding it as more of a stability. You're gonna feel the stretch deeper that way as well. You're gonna feel it more into the hip instead of um, pulling away from the surface that you're holding on to. When you're ready, we can come out of it. Please hydrate if you can. I always try to in these classes, educate at the same time about birth and contractions and just the journey, the rest of the journey of your pregnancy. So if you hear something that you've heard before, please don't mind me. I'm, I'm just repeating just in case you haven't heard it. I always say to hydrate throughout the class, and that's important to hydrate in between contractions. But when your contractions begin, make sure to also relieve your bladder in between contractions because you want to have the next contraction in an empty bladder, not a full bladder. A full bladder is annoying and uncomfortable enough. So make sure that you relieve the bladder. It's one of the things in your pattern and your routine to do in between contractions, to hydrate a little bit, to eat lightly, and to also um, go to the bathroom and just be ready for when the next one comes. Um, just something to add into your routine there. Unfortunately, in class, we can't do that all the time because it's class, but you can kind of get an idea of how um, birth can look like. So we're going to take those books at the top of the mat or those blocks at the top of the mat. Let's place the left foot forward, right foot in the back. We're coming back into your warrior one foot pattern. So you're bending into your front knee, align the front knee right on top of your front ankle, Engage that back leg. So try not to bend the back knee. Try to straighten the back knee and press the back thigh away so that you're engaging through the inner thighs and strengthening the pelvic floor muscles. When you're ready, hug the baby a little closer to you so you're not arching way too much to the low back. And then reach the hands up towards the sky, rolling your shoulders right on top of your hips. Now as you inhale, straighten the front leg and reach the hands up. Now as you exhale, pull the elbows down and back and bend into the front knee. We're gonna do four more. And each time you pull down, you wanna pull down with so much strength as if you're pulling down a bunch of weights. So you're energizing and feeling this in both the arms and the legs. Stay with your breath, inhale to reach up. Exhale to pull down, we got one more, inhale. Exhale, release the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers, squeeze the shoulder blades together, press the knuckles down the back leg, lift through the heart, and add a few stretches of the neck here to release any tension in the bottom of the neck. Very nice. Let's shake it off. Take the hands to the hips. Inhale, let it out. Reach the hands up towards the sky. And as you exhale, let's open up into warrior two. So warrior two, the back foot opens up a little bit and then turns to be parallel to the back of the mat. 
Keep bending into the front knee. Your hips are facing towards the side of the mat. And then as you're bending into your front knee, can you trace your front knee right on top of your ankle? So towards the middle toes instead of the big toes. Reach the hands out away from you. As you inhale, straighten the front leg, bring the hands to heart center. As you exhale, press the hands away and bend into the front knee. Inhale to bring them in. Exhale to press out. Three more, inhale. Exhale, deep breath in, let it out. Keep engaging through the inner thighs here. You're feeling that tension in the pelvic floor muscles. And even if you don't feel it, it's there. Stay in your warrior two. Reverse the front palm, reverse your warrior towards the back. Keep bending into the front knee. Back into your warrior two. And then let's bring forward forearm to front thigh. Reach the opposite fingertips up and over. Press the ribs up towards the sky. Come back into your warrior two. Let's begin to straighten out the front leg. Shift the hips towards the back. Reach forward your left fingertips as much as you can. Keep reaching, keep reaching away so you're lengthening through the bottom ribs. And then plant that left hand to a block or a book as you reach your right fingertips up towards the sky. You wanna press your heart towards the wall you're facing. And as you exhale, turn the torso towards that wall a little bit more lengthening through both sides of the body and turning the torso a little more so you're feeling that twist. Excellent. Let's bend into the front knee. Come all the way back up into your warrior two. Inhale to prepare, ladies, and as you exhale, you're gonna cartwheel the hands to the blocks or to the books, to the inside of that left foot. You can even wiggle that left foot to the side a little bit. And you're gonna bring the back ball of the foot on the mat. So you're coming into your high lunge here. So keep your hips to shoulder height. Try not to shift forward. You don't want to pull those round ligaments. Inhale to lengthen. Now as you exhale, shift the hips back as you straighten out both legs. Press the back heel into the floor. Inhale to shift forward. Exhale to shift back. One more. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale to shift back. As you inhale, shift forward, bend into the front knee, and then drop the back knee to the floor. Shift the hips back and over that right knee, and then extend the left leg out in front of you. Point the toes up towards the sky from that left foot. Lengthen the spine. Inhale to lengthen, and as you exhale, fold a little deeper forward. As you inhale, you're gonna tuck in and round as much as you can. Keep pressing the spine towards the back of the room. And as you exhale, press the chest forward, and towards your toes as you're lengthening. Inhale to tuck in and round, round, round. Exhale to press forward, lengthen. One more, inhale. Exhale. Excellent, let's begin to bend into the front knee, walk those blocks or those books to the inside of that left foot once again. High lunge and then walk the hands to the center of the mat and release for your wide-legged forward fold. Feet can come parallel to each other or toes and heels out, your choice. You can fold, you can interlace the fingers behind your back to add a little shoulder stretch here, especially if you're working over a computer these days and the shoulders are super tight by rounding your upper back, especially if the, be the belly is getting bigger and bigger and you're just rounding the upper back because, because of the weight, because of protection, because that's what we tend to do as humans. This makes sense. And then as you begin to release coming back into center, take your time, of course, if you're still in a stretch. As you keep your legs straight, just begin to shift the hips from side to side. So we tend to bend the knees here, but try to keep the legs straight, just bending, um, keeping the legs straight, not bending, but just shifting the hips from side to side and feeling this stretch in the inner thighs. Once you've done that a few times, then begin to bend into the right knee, shifting over to the right side and keeping the left foot grounded. And then bend into the left knee, keeping the opposite foot grounded, opposite leg straight. And try that a couple times from side to side. You're gonna feel the stretch. Just go a little deeper down the leg, maybe to the back of the leg too. And then when you've done that a few times, then add the feet. So you're gonna flex the foot of the straight leg 
Bring the seat a little closer to the floor here. Feel the stretch wherever it may be for you, maybe uh, hamstrings, maybe inner thighs. And then we're gonna toe heel the feet back in, coming to center, bend the knees, round the spine, and slowly come on up. You can shake it off if you like. We're gonna just check in with balance before we move on to our final and fourth discomfort pose. So we're gonna try tree pose. And if you feel like your balance might be a little tricky today, just go next to something that you can hold on to, the wall, um, a surface, anything that you can find balance with, okay? So we're gonna, to get started with, we're gonna open up the feet a little wider than hip distance apart, just so you can have a wider stance here. Roll the shoulders over the hips, sitting nice and tall. And then you're gonna begin to shift the weight over to the right foot, externally rotating the left knee out to the side. You can keep the foot half on the floor and half off the floor. So maybe at your ankle as a little bit of a kickstand here. Maybe the whole foot can come to the ankle or the calf. Just not on the knee joint. So if you wanna go above the knee into the thigh, grab the foot and place it there. You can release the hands on your belly. Maybe they can come to heart center. Wherever you feel comfortable, maybe they come all the way up towards the sky, maybe they branch off. Wherever you are, relax the shoulders and see if you can press away from that bottom hip. We're probably collapsing into that right hip, so can we press away and lengthen? Imagine that somebody's pulling the crown of your head all the way up towards the sky, so you're lengthening to the back of the neck, your spine, and you're growing a couple inches taller. Let's take one more deep breath in, and then as you exhale, take the hands back through center. Hug that left knee out to the side, and then let's kick off that bottom hip. Excellent, very nice. Let's come back to center. So we're gonna open up the feet, outer hip distance apart, shift the weight over to the left foot, externally rotate that right knee out to the side, find your kickstand. Maybe this tree pose looks a little different. Maybe it looks the same, exactly the same as before. Wherever you put the foot, just try not to put it on the knee joint. You wanna avoid the joints especially now that you have relaxin, making your joints so much more flexible, you wanna protect your joints. So you place the foot wherever you can, place the hands wherever you need, wherever you feel more comfortable. Maybe it looks a little different than last time, it's absolutely fine. Relax the shoulders, roll the shoulders on top of the hips. What are you doing with that bottom hip? Can you press away that left hip so you're growing out of it, pulling the belly as if you're pulling the belly away from the thigh, and growing a couple inches taller. Take a deep breath and lengthen. And then slowly take the hands back through center. Hug the knee off to the side. And then let's kick it off. Excellent, very nice. As a reward for a perfect balance, for those of you that I can see, we're gonna come in for our final discomfort pose. So we're gonna grab a block or a book and we're gonna place in between the thighs as we find the surface, a wall preferably, that we can put our backs on. So I'm gonna come back into the window here. I'm gonna place my feet far away from the wall, not far, but just far enough that I'm able to uh, bend my knees and bring my knees right on top of my ankles. Take a deep breath in and then slide down. So as if you're coming into a chair pose, so we're coming into our wall squat. As you can see here, it's a little bit more difficult, right? So we can't really move from side to side. We can't really release the hips to find movement in the feet. So let's find some movement in the hands, in the arms, shake them off. Shake them off. Maybe find a little massage in the shoulders, just like we did before in the beginning of our practice. Maybe circle the jaw around to relax through the jaw. Maybe a few circles around the eyebrows to relax any sinus headaches or any tension in the eyes or the eyebrows. Find horse lips with me. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Inhale. Exhale. Deep breath in. One more.
It's always good to express some noise. So maybe hum at the back of your throat. Inhale. One more deep breath in and let's slowly come on up. Shake it off. And by shake it off, I mean really allow your quads to feel soft here. Use your hands and just wiggle them from side to side to shake it off, relax, and find any relaxation pose that works for you. So before we did the L shape, we did the figure four. Another one is to hold a surface once again, bend the knee and press the foot away from you. So you're adding a little bit of a hip flexor stretch here, a little bit of a dancer pose, not too much of a back bend, just a tiny bit, but press the foot away from you so you're feeling it in the front of your hip. Another one is just to sit down in a yogic squat. So you can bring um, a book underneath your seat and just sit all the way down as you open up through the thighs. You can always stretch the upper body. If you watch me, I'm gonna place my hand uh, parallel to the floor, right up against the wall, and then I'm going to turn my torso away from the wall. So I'm stretching out that pec major area, the front of the chest. You can always bring this arm diagonally towards the corner, towards the upper corner of the room, and then press away. You're going to feel this right underneath your armpit. These stretches are especially good for postpartum as well. Um, when you have the baby, you're going to be breastfeeding a lot, carrying the baby around, and rounding your upper back even more than before. So you want to give a nice stretch to open up to the chest there. Excuse me. And you also want to use that diagonal stretch to open up the lactation ducts that are located underneath our, um, our armpits and the lymph nodes. So that's a good one to keep in mind for after. Come back to a relaxation pose that resonated with you the most. Whether that was the hip stretch or the L shape or the hip flexor stretch in the front or the shoulder stretch, side bend, or even the yogic squat that I'm doing right now. Whatever makes sense, whatever helps. Excellent, ladies. And as you're finishing up, take your time, of course. I'm not trying to rush you. Just letting you know what the next step is. As you're finishing up with your poses, as you're finishing up with your stretches and your breaths, we're going to come back down to our mat. And we're going to come and sit on the edge of that blanket once again. So find that thick towel or a blanket that you have. Hold it up a couple times and sit on the edge of it. I'm going to bring the soles of the feet together and knees apart, coming into your butterfly pose, your baddha konasana. And we're going to come in for our pelvic floor exercises. So find a comfortable seat wherever you think is the most organic for you. If you are aware of your pelvic floor muscle exercises, if you've done this with me before, feel free to just close your eyes and begin with your breathing. If you're still uncertain what the pelvic floor exercises are, just bear with me as I go through a description that might resonate with you and that might make things a little bit more clear. So the pelvic floor is located at the base of our pelvis and these muscles are creating sort of like a hammock. They go from side to side or front and front to back uh, on the bottom of our pelvis and they hold everything up. And the center of those muscles is where the baby kind of wiggles through to get through and come out of the pelvis, completely out. And so what we're doing here is we're training those muscles to not only stretch, but to also engage at our command. Basically, what we're doing here is the Kegel exercises. But when we women tend to participate in Kegel exercises, we tend to pulsate a lot and we tend to tighten a lot. So we're not trying to tighten here, we're trying to create more flexibility and more awareness of where these muscles are and how we can control them. So we couple the, these techniques, these, um, in these, the stretching and the engagement technique 
we couple them with long, deep breathing, long abdominal breathing, like we did in the beginning of our practice. So it's a little counterintuitive. However, when you inhale, these muscles stretch, just like your belly stretches, just like your chest stretches and puffs up, just like your cheeks stretch and they puff up because they fill up with air and you're filling up your tank with air all the way up. And then as you exhale, you can really, you start to collapse, you start to sink in, you start to uh, empty your tank all the way down, you pull your belly in, and then you pull the pelvic floor muscles up and in, and you can even hold for one count. As you inhale, you release and you stretch them out. So as you can see, this process is much slower than Kegels. If you're not really certain of where these muscles are and how you're doing, if you're doing it right, there is no right or wrong. Is this if you're breathing to your deepest capacity, which means breathe in as much as you can until you have no more space to breathe any more else other air in. And then if you're breathing out to your deepest capacity, which means that you're letting go of all of your air to the point where you're running out of breath, you need to take another breath in. That right there is helping you stretch out those muscles and engage them. And with practice, you'll figure out how to do it on command. Now, when we tend to hold in and when we tend to engage and hold for a count or two, we tend to also engage the glutes. Can you try to relax the glutes and try to just focus on the front and the base of your pelvis, which might make it a little bit more subtle of a movement, and that's okay. Again, if it doesn't make any sense today or last time we did this, it's, it's okay, keep practicing, and I promise by the time birth comes, you'll figure it out if you just keep doing it. And you'll know exactly what to do and where to let go and where to soften when the time comes. Take one more deep breath in and as you exhale, engage those muscles once again, hold them for one count, and then you can begin to release. You can open up your eyes if you close them. And we're gonna come in for our final stretch. So we're gonna bring the right leg forward and we're gonna bring the right leg into a 90 degree angle. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing my shin parallel to the front of the mat. Just imagine this is the front of the mat. I know it's the side. And then I'm bringing the side of my hip, the side of my thigh uh, parallel to the side of the mat. And then I'm flexing my foot. And then I'm adding the opposite leg right on top. And I'm bringing knee on top of ankle and ankle on top of knee. Now, if you're really tight, this is gonna feel a lot but this is the best um, hip stretch that we can come to with bigger bellies. Now, if, you're, if your belly is smaller and this is way too much for you, that's absolutely fine. What you can do is just plant the bottom foot to the ground and come into your seated figure four. We did this in standing, but now we're just doing it in seated. This can be a little limiting though with the bigger belly, so this is why this is best. And it's okay if there's a big, huge gap between the knee and the ankle. That's absolutely fine. With practice, again, you're creating more space. If you feel comfortable here, stay here. If you want a little bit extra challenge, then press forward, but press with your chest forward as if you wanna reach your chest towards the front of your mat or towards the wall in front of you. Lengthen as much as you can. Keep tilting the tailbone towards the back and try not to round your upper back. There's no point of coming closer to the floor here. That belly will not allow you anyway. So let's just take a deep breath in, lengthen, and as you exhale, hinge forward a little bit more. Two more, exactly like this. Inhale to lengthen. And exhale to press forward. One more, inhale to lengthen. And exhale to press forward a little more. Excellent. As slowly begin to lean back, we're gonna to begin to unwind the legs, take the feet out in front of you. You can windshield wipe from side to side here just to kind of release through the hips. We're gonna take it over to the opposite side. So let's bend into the left knee, bring the left um, ankle, uh, sorry, the left shin right in front of you, parallel to the front of the mat. Thigh is parallel to the side of the mat, flex the foot, and stack the opposite leg right on top. 
Very nice. You might be, if you're sitting on the edge of a blanket, you might be rolling off of your blanket. That's perfect. You want to stack shin on top of shin, ankle on top of knee, knee on top of ankle, lengthen through the spine. Stay as you are where you are, if you're comfortable, or you can begin to lean forward. You're going to start to feel that stretch rise as you're leaning forward. Maybe the side is a little tighter. Maybe the side is less tight and more open. It's, it's just up to you and how your hips feel. You can release the hands to the floor, press your heart forward, lengthen through the spine, and as you exhale, lean forward a little bit more. Stay where you are, the spine length with your each inhale in, each breath in, and as you exhale, press forward a little more. Two more, exactly like that, inhale. Let it out. He's back to remind me that it's feeding time. <laughs> Inhale. Let it out. Excellent. And then you can begin to lean back. You can unwind the legs. Take the feet out in front of you. You can wedge your white from side to side. And we can begin to release. Excellent. And we're going to try to relax into Shavasana. So um, if you have props, it would be, if for those ladies that can't see, if you have blocks, you can put your blocks. This might not work with books, unfortunately, but you can put your blocks in the back of your mat into an L shape like this, just like we do in class. You can take a long pillow and place it on top so you can recline back. If you have a couch nearby, you can always just go off camera and recline on your couch, just like you are here. You can place your sacrum all the way back and lie back. Or ladies, if you don't have any props, unfortunately, it's on our left side. So I'm just going to do my right side because I'm facing you. This is what I was talking about um, with Ashley before. So keep the bottom leg straight. Add your pillows. I don't have sufficient amount of pillows here, but I can maybe grab my blocks and pretend that I'm making it this high and make it you know, make a surface this high, go to your left side, and then as you're hiking up that top leg, make sure that your ankle is aligned with your knee, and you're just kind of shifting forward. So your belly is not really smushed to the floor. You're hiking up your hips, so you're keeping your hips nice and um, even, but you're also not, you're making sure that they're not collapsing. And if you try that, you'll feel that upper hip will feel good and lower hip will not have as much weight. So wherever you come for your Shavasana, close your eyes, take the hands to the belly or off to the side, palms facing up. Take a deep breath in and sigh it out. Let it go. Maybe that sigh is audible, maybe it's not completely soften into the ground.
Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Begin to awaken the body. You can wiggle fingers, you can wiggle toes, roll wrists and ankles. You can roll the head from side to side if that's feasible for you. Stretch the hands back behind you, stretch the feet away from you as you're straightening out the legs wherever you are. And then as lazily as possible, press the forearms, the palms into the ground, coming up into a comfortable seat. Try to keep your eyes closed here and the movement soft and lazy. As you're coming into a comfortable seat, roll the shoulders over the hips, sitting nice and tall. Just notice any shifts, any adjustments in the body here, taking in some time to connect with your breath, connect with your body, connect with that intention that you set at the beginning, if you set one. And then when you're ready, take the hands to heart center, press those thumbs into the center of your chest, Lift the sternum up so you're lengthening through the upper back one more time. Take a deep breath in through the nose. And let it out through the mouth, out with the sigh. Thank you, ladies, so much for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.